Hi there. The idea behind the uh, video today is to show you a couple different setups I use uh, with the Rope Tech Hitchhiker. Uh, I started using the Rope Tech Hitchhiker uh, probably about three or four years ago, and um, I had uh, experimented with a couple different types of setups. Uh, what I like to do is uh, use the Hitchhiker uh, in a rope walker system. Uh, that incorporates a foot ascender and a hand ascender with a foot loop or a foot ascender and a knee ascender with a foot loop. Um, they both have their advantages um, and I'll try to show you both of them uh, today and some of the benefits of each one. They both work very well um, but I am using the uh, Rope Tech Hitchhiker. Uh, this is the Generation 1 there's uh, three versions of the uh, Hitchhiker, uh, two versions made by Rope Tech. Uh, this is Generation 1 by Rope Tech. Um, Generation 2 uh, really kind of uh, made the device more compact and lightweight. And then the third device uh, is uh, produced by Climbing Innovations. And uh, that is considerably different from version or Generation 1 or 2. Uh, the Generation 3 or Hitchhiker X uh, uses an aluminum body instead of a steel body. Uh, that is one drawback to the Hitchhiker is that it's fairly heavy. It uses a steel carabiner here at the bottom and a steel body and uh, a steel dog bone here. Um, the aluminum version is considerably lighter. The Generation 2 is very similar to this. It still uses a steel body and steel carabiner. Um, but things are more refined. Uh, the body is smaller and uh, more lightweight and compact uh, than this first version. Now one benefit to the Hitchhiker is that it's really a bulletproof device with it being all steel construction. Uh, this could potentially be a lifetime device for you as a climber um, and probably would only be need to be replaced uh, if you want to upgrade to some newer system. Uh, it is heavy, uh, so if you are packing your uh, recreational tree climbing gear into the woods, uh, it's kind of a chore to haul this compared to some other systems. But the versatility of it and um, really the ease of use, uh, I think, uh, really justify carrying it for me. But you'd have to decide for yourself if it's uh, something that uh, you'd want to consider based on the weight, uh, but also on the benefits of the system. Um, I usually typically use a, uh, a tending pulley here at the bottom. Uh, this isn't included in the device normally. This is an ISC fixed plate pulley. Uh, this incorporates into a, a ring on my bridge, uh, which helps me to uh, tend the device a little bit easier uh, as I go up. Um, and I like it quite a bit. Uh, it's a worthy addition, I think, if you are running uh, Generation 1 or 2 hitchhikers. Uh, really consider uh, trying to run this if you have a ring on your bridge. Um, I think it really improves the uh, performance of the device, at least for me. Uh, some other climbers uh, weren't very thrilled with uh, the benefits that you get from this, and they choose not to use it. Uh, originally, of course, I didn't use this pulley, and it, the device worked fine. I think things are smoothed up a bit uh, and it really does help to tend the device and uh, fairly to slack uh, uh, and tend slack out of the system easier with that. So with that being said, um, I'll try to show you two different setups for the Hitchhiker today. Uh, this Rope Tech Hitchhiker has the uh, Hitchhiker holster. Uh, which is a little plastic uh, device that kind of bolts in here uh, with the carabiner. Um, it allows you to tend the device uh, with something like a chest harness uh, that allows you to advance the device up as you ascend uh, and it pulls the device up. Um, you don't have to have this hitchhiker holster. Um, you can use uh, just a little section of rope. I've seen some people use kind of a wire coat hanger around here. Uh, this device, the Hitchhiker Holster, is available separately. I think you can still buy it. Uh, it's compatible with Generation 1 and 2. 
uh, but not the Generation uh, 3 or the Hitchhiker X. Uh, typically the first thing I do is install the Hitchhiker device uh, uh, right on the rope itself. Again, this is uh, six coils on here. Uh, this is just using the standard hitch that uh, Rope Tech recommends. You can use any kind of variety of hitches here. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, Richard Mumford uh, has some great videos about different uh, hitches that you can use with the uh, Hitchhiker. Uh, I've always kind of gravitated toward gravitated towards the uh, the one that uh, Rope Tech uh, recommended. Um, you can vary the number of coils depending on your weight uh, and the rope diameter. Uh, it's something you really have to fine-tune. Uh, another factor in how many coils you might need is uh, what type of hitch cord you're using. Uh, you can use a variety of hitch cords uh, with the Rope Tech Hitchhiker. Uh, I'm using Sterling RIT or RIT cord. It's a 9mm cord. Uh, it works pretty good on 11mm uh, uh, rope for me. Um, the rope today is a Yale Bandit, um, probably my most favorite rope of all arborist ropes that I've used. Um, it has extremely low stretch, it's cheap, um, it's very difficult to find now. Um, they do have a kind of a sister rope to this that's a different color. That's the Yale uh, Blaze. Uh, it's orange in color. Uh, you can still find this Yale Bandit in a few different places. Uh, it's typically uh, a dollar or less per foot, so it's a pretty inexpensive rope. Uh, so I've got the device installed here. Um, now, I have a, uh, a harness that has rope bridges here, and on the rope bridges I have two rings uh, that you can attach uh, your climbing systems to. Uh, this will allow you to use two different systems at the same time. Um, initially here we're just going to work with one of these rope bridges. Uh, one of these rings is aluminum, one of these is steel. Uh, I like to use the uh, steel ring uh, with the Rope Tech Hitchhiker because almost all of the components uh, or the hardware with the Rope Tech Hitchhiker are steel. So I feel it's a little bit uh, more durable. Now you can, you can install the Rope Tech Hitchhiker uh, just directly onto the ring um, and uh, use it that way, uh, like such, and uh, it works very well. Um, one thing uh, that I've uh, discovered is that if you incorporate a pulley here, uh, the uh, tending of the Hitchhiker uh, seems to be much better for me at least. Um, uh, I'll show it to you here in a second. Uh, it's not my original idea, it's something that I had picked up off of TreeBuzz, uh, an online forum for uh, climbers to discuss uh, various climbing techniques. I suggest you check out that forum, uh, but uh, this is where I got this neat trick. What you do is you uh, you can find a fixed plate pulley that can work for you. This is an ISC fixed plate pulley. Um, it, uh, it captures inside this ring here, uh, and I'll show you. Uh, but it does feed the rope through uh, the pulley here, and it makes tending much easier for me at least. How I like to set up the device you uh, take the fixed plate pulley, uh, you can use an ISC, I think you can use the Petzl Fix, uh, but you can put that on uh, the rope there underneath the device and kind of capture it there in the ring. Uh, and you open up the carabiner and capture the pulley in the ring. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Uh, that allows the rope to kind of uh, feed through the pulley, and it makes tending, at least for me, much easier. The tending action is much easier. And it doesn't interfere with the climbing at all. I wanted to give you a first-person view of uh, the connections here involved with the Rope Tech uh, Hitchhiker. Uh, if you are going to use the uh, fixed plate pulley, you would just kind of capture the rope there. 
um, find the ring that you're going to use on your bridge and kind of mate them together like this and the idea is to put the carabiner through this hole right here it's a little awkward but it's worth it i think And that captures the pulley there uh, in the bridge ring and allows for a lot easier tending, at least for me. As you can see, it's quite a bit smoother. Um, so to get going here, typically I'll put on my tending device uh, that I will tend the device up as you go up the rope. And uh, I'll install my foot ascender here and take a few steps with my foot ascender put my weight on the rope so my weight is on the uh, device now and on the rope I've got my foot ascender there installed on my right uh, foot and I have my knee ascender over here partially installed uh, what you can do is once you get on the rope install your knee ascender um, and then the bungee attaches to uh, pretty much anywhere you can get it to work. I've got to attach it up here uh, to get a good pull, but uh, depending on your setup, you might be able to attach it down here or to your bridge ring. And uh, now you just take a step with your right foot, take a step with your left foot, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And um, the walking action actually gets easier as you get up the rope because there's more weight of the rope pulling down and allows your uh, ascenders to uh, climb up the rope easier. One benefit of using the uh, knee ascender uh, instead of a hand ascender above the hitchhiker is that by using a knee ascender and a foot ascender, you're tensioning the rope underneath the device, the hitchhiker. And the hitchhiker likes to climb up a tensioned line. Um, if you put a hand ascender above, uh, you'll create slack in the line and the hitchhiker doesn't like to uh, slide up the rope as easily. It'll work fine, um, but uh, the hitchhiker does love to climb up a tensioned rope or be, to be pulled up a tensioned rope. Um, as you can see here. So the uh, hitchhiker does love to climb up a tensioned rope. Uh, that's one of the best things about using a knee ascender is it tensions the rope and allows the device to climb up or slide up or to be tended up uh, that tensioned rope. I'll show you the difference uh, here in a second by using a hand ascender above and then using a foot loop for your left foot off of that. Works great, I've uh, done it for years. This here is uh, a little bit more efficient, I think, uh, but a little more fussy also. So uh, let me get my tending point unhooked here. And I'm going to just unhook my foot ascender and then unhook the bungee from the knee ascender and just attach that for storage on my saddle there. And you can store this uh, knee ascender off to the side like this, as long as you're not doing something too acrobatic in the tree. Uh, it does stay there pretty nicely.
this kind of shows the system just on the rope. Um, uh, here is the Rope Tech Hitchhiker. Um, uh, at the bottom, uh, for my right foot, I use the CNY foot sender. Uh, and then for my left foot, I use this adjustable, homemade, adjustable uh, foot strap. Uh, and that's just using some hardware pieces uh, to prevent uh, sewing. And then there's a bungee cord here that's uh, attached to your harness or some type of uh, uh, connection point uh, on your harness. Uh, that will fair lead this knee ascender up and then you can take a step with your foot and uh, that's how you would ascend the rope and essentially that's the order of the sys uh, that the devices are installed you install this connect it to your harness uh, install this on your right foot take a few steps uh, install the knee ascender Put your foot, left foot, in the left foot loop, and then attach the bungee cord uh, somewhere on your harness uh, so you can get a good pull on this up. Now this is another way you can set up the hitchhiker. Um, with the hitchhiker installed on the rope here, uh, as in the previous setup, um, you can install a hand ascender above the hitchhiker. Uh, this is an older Petzl. Uh, and I have a handmade or homemade uh, foot loop here uh, and that gives me a step for my left foot and then for my right foot I have the foot ascender uh, here at the bottom so you would step with your right foot uh, advance the ascender here above the device and step with your left foot and then the device is uh, tended up the rope as you ascend up now this uh, creates a little bit of slack here, uh, and you'll see that as I ascend. Uh, it works fine. The knee ascender, I think, uh, works a little bit more efficiently, but it's a little more fussy. Uh, this system here is not quite as fussy for me, but not quite as efficient either. Now one great benefit to using the hand ascender is with 11 millimeter rope or 10 millimeter rope, um, it's really kind of difficult and tiring to grip the rope just bare. Uh, of course, the hand descender gives you a nice ergonomic grip to kind of pull yourself up the rope. Now, you shouldn't be pulling too much with your arms with this type of setup. Uh, really, your legs should be doing all the work, but it is still nice to have a nice grip on your hand, a nice positive grip on your hand. So, let me show you how all this works here. So I have the uh, hitchhiker installed here uh, and the hand sender above uh, with the foot loop dangling here for my left foot. I have the uh, right foot ascender on my right foot and I'm just going to attach that now and attach the uh, tending point uh, or tether here uh, to tend the device up the rope as I ascend. And the idea here is you take a step with your right foot, tension the rope, maybe a couple, and sit back into the saddle. So I have the hitchhiker installed on the rope, the uh, right foot ascender is engaged here in the rope, and uh, now I'm going to attach the uh, foot loop onto my left foot. What you can do is you can raise your right foot. It gets a little bit easier once there's some uh, weight on the rope. And stand up, advance the left hand ascender here. And you can ascend the rope that way very easily. It is nice having that grip, but uh, your weight really 
or your weight should be lifted by your feet and legs here uh, not necessarily by pulling yourself up with your weaker arms um, as I go up here the next couple of feet look at the tension in the rope uh, in this system and as I step and then advance this hand descender you'll see a little bubble of slack here and uh, the hitchhiker will climb up the rope or be tended up the rope with that um, but it's much more efficient to pull the it's much more efficient to tend the hitchhiker up the rope uh, when it's under tension so I'll take a step with my right foot stand up advance the hand ascender and the foot loop and then as I step into that foot loop you can see the system is slacking until I take a step with the right foot it works fine um, but you don't get that uh, bubble of slack or that little kind of you don't get that slack with the uh, knee ascender So I use this type of system with the hand ascender and the left foot loop uh, for several years and it works fine. I've just recently switched the knee ascender and uh, I like it quite a bit but it is a little more fussy. So I do like to come back to this and visit this uh, older setup. I've been very comfortable with it over the years. I'm still getting comfortable with the knee ascender but I think I may stick with the knee ascender here going forward. Now to come down, first thing you need to do is unclip the tending point here. Um, and then you can unclip the foot ascender, break that loose. And then you do have to take off the hand ascender and uh, store that. Now with these systems typically you have a fairly long foot loop compared to the uh, knee ascender I just kind of like to double it up in here and close the cam and then allows you to store it a little bit easier I'm uh, getting ready to come down here I've got uh, my belay hand here my right hand and I'm just going to massage the top of this knot uh, to come down So to come down, once you have the hand ascender removed and the foot ascender removed, uh, you can just reach up here and push down on this hitch uh, knot and uh, massage it just a little bit. You can see it doesn't take a lot of pressure at all. It's just two fingers. And, uh, and then regulate how much rope is uh, fed into the hitchhiker from underneath with your right hand. I think it gives you a good uh, control over your descent. <laughs> 